Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another video. This is another paid request. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, reviews, commentaries, re-reviews, randomness, out of the blueness, pretty much anything, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. It may take a bit because I'm quite backed up, but I will try to get to it as soon as I can. But this is for the new film, The Batman. Now, it was funny because there would be times where people go, Oh, I can't wait till you rant on this. And I'm like, any movie that comes out has potential for me to like it or dislike it. To surprise me or, or not. And, you know, I always get this thing where people go, You hate everything. And then I name like a dozen movies in the past year. I'm like, well, I enjoyed the new Suicide Squad. I enjoyed Joker. I enjoyed Blade Runner 2049. I enjoyed Malignant. I enjoyed Nobody. I enjoyed 1917. I enjoyed Uncut Gems with Adam Sandler. I enjoyed The Disaster Artist. I'm like, how many you want me to name? And then they can't say anything. I think there's a lot of films that are poorly done in recent years. This is not one of them. I really, truly enjoyed this film. I thought it was really damn good. Do I have nitpicks? Yeah. I think there's, you know, 10, 15 minutes that could be trimmed out. But I said the same thing on Blade Runner 2049. Um, and like Blade Runner 2049, which, yeah, I would put that above this personally. But like that film, I enjoyed the world it built, the atmosphere, the effects. Meaning, maybe effects are the wrong word, but the just here the mood, the lighting, the the music very well done music the it's not a big action film there are action bits I think the action bits are well handled and Batman films if you think about them, they don't you look at all of them they don't have a lot of action even the Michael Keaton films there's action but it's not wall to wall they're not John Wick films but do I enjoy the lead do I enjoy the story do I enjoy other attributes and I did quite a bit and people say this film's boring I didn't find it boring just like I didn't find Blade Runner 2049 boring I didn't over long sure like I said 10 to 15 minutes could be cut out Catwoman says a stupid line about white privileged men did it need to be there no did that ruin the whole movie because of one line no plus to me I also showed Catwoman was a hypocrite no I don't think the movie's woke there are elements like that line that's stupid, but that doesn't mean the entire... Not every film is woke. Although, I mean, I do think there are films that are. I do. But if you think everything <clears throat> is woke, then you'll find it in every single movie. Oh, Catwoman's black. So what? Eartha Kitt was black back in the Adam West Batman days. Well, Jeffrey, I like Jeffrey Wright. He was a damn good Commissioner Gordon. In fact, I would think he's been the best c cinema version of Commissioner Gordon. Gary Oldman is close. Uh, but I really like Jeffrey Wright. I liked his back and forth with Batman. Uh, this is before he's a Commissioner. This is the year two Batman. And what I enjoyed overall was the hidden core of the movie. The hidden core is this journey of a vigilante who becomes a hero. And that clicked in my mind, and I went, that I can get behind. I liked that arc for Batman. And the movie, the fact that it's more, I knew going in, and I wanted more of a detective story. I wanted the movie Seven, but with a more hopeful ending. And it was more of a mystery. It was more of a detective story with starring Batman. That's what I wanted. That's what I got. And I'm satisfied. And the the narration, the music, they used Nirvana's song from the the movie, the, the trailer. Something in the way. Twice. Like as bookends. Near the beginning and near the end. I thought it was a perfect choice for that song. A lot of times when a song's in a trailer, it's not used in a movie, like Hurt with Logan. From the trailer, that's not in the movie, which is too bad. But this is, and the score. 
I thought it was a very good story. The softer emotional moments, the ambiance that made it feel at times like a horror movie. You know, the Riddler felt like you know, the Zodiac Killer. I like that. It felt refreshing in this era of comic book super. It's like Joker. Like the same vibe of Joker. Why I enjoyed that. I enjoyed this. In fact, I think it just. It could have just been rated R. They could have just pushed it even more. But yeah, I love that idea of. Robert Pad said, I think, knocked out of the park. I think it's his best performance. And to me, this is the second best Batman I've seen. Live action wise. Number one will always be Michael Keaton for me. But this is number two. He's I, I like him better than Val Kilmer. He beats the shout George Clooney. And yes, I think he beats the shout Christian Bale. Because Christian Bale, as Batman, was ridiculous with his voice. <laughs> Rachel with the trigger. You know, I hated that voice. It was ridiculous. It was silly. It was stupid. I know there's a guy that's like, stop making fun of Christopher Nolan films. I'm sorry I'm not. I don't think those films age well. I was never that big, but I think when I first saw them, I'm like, eh, it's okay. Heath Ledger's the best part of The Dark Knight, not Batman. But the best part of this is Batman. There's not wall-to-wall -wall fights, but when they happen, they're better staged than Christopher Nolan. They're better shot than Christopher Nolan did. They're not confusing. You watch the fight scenes of Batman Begins. They're confusing as hell. They're shaky cam as hell. Like this. You cannot tell what the hell is going on. People, what I like Christopher Nolan, I like Inception. I like Memento. I like Insomnia. Interstellar, I liked until the third act. Because I thought the third act was, was stupid. Um, Tenet was okay. I think they gave it like three stars out of five. But what Chris, his war film I didn't mind. I, I thought that was okay. I didn't hate it. That came out a few years ago, his, his war film. But Nolan, I think, is better suited for that, not for Batman. To me, this was a better version of a Christopher Nolan Batman film. That gritty, dark, but has a little bit of that Tim Burton... It's, it's not supposed to be real, real with the way this, the the Gotham became a character on itself. It's always raining, it's oh, it's grim, the lighting. People go, well, uh, Bruce Wayne's not in it much. Uh, I like that. It made it refreshing. Because so many times I see these superhero comic book movies and the guy in the suit is barely in the film. This is the opposite. I would say 80% of the movie you see Batman either investigating or dealing with the cops or a nice... Batmobile chase, or a nice you know, little fight scene. And Robert Pattinson sold it. Always oh, emo. Well, if he's all emo, then <clears throat> every fucking Batman film's emo, because that's the character. That's part of the character. It's a guy whose parents died, murdered in front of him, and he decides to fuck everything. Well, not fuck everything, but he decides, screw it, and I'm going to be a guy in a bat suit. And he's always thinking about his parents and the death of his parents. You could easily say any movie then with Batman is emo. If you think. And also part of the story is that there's not a lot of Bruce Wayne. That's part of the point. That's why there's not a lot of Bruce Wayne. Because there's room to grow. That's the point. What I mean by that is Robert Pattinson's performance and his character and the, the dialogue easily say that this is a Bruce Wayne who thinks being Bruce Wayne is useless? Who thinks being Bruce Wayne is pointless? Who thinks being Bruce Wayne does nothing? That's why people go, oh, you know, the Wayne family did stuff with philanthropy, but you haven't done anything for a while. TZ thinks he needs to be Batman 24-7. He comes out, he's not about, what he tells to Alfred, it's not about family business, it's about the work, the work, the work. You know, some guy went, no disrespect, but he went, well, Alfred does all the detective work. No, Alfred helps, but Batman does do detective work. Batman founds out, you know, not to spoil, uh, but I'll give a clue, URL, if people remember that scene, he figures that out. The end part with the carpet, I mean, being vague, there are various parts where he's being a detective, figures stuff out. 
And in the end, it's about a Bruce Wayne that he thinks he needs to be Batman 24-7, and that's self-destructive. He's steering the shadow of criminals, being, I'm vengeance. And you f it's a world where you tell it's filled with crime and it's filled with darkness and the criminals are scared of, like the cops are scared of them. When he enters a crime scene, they back off. He's a, he's a symbol of fear. And then by the end, he, be he wants to become, and does become a hero. Being a vigilante is not enough. You have to be a hero and save people's lives. This is stuff I want in Zack Snyder's movies. That he failed badly. And I'm sorry. This was an easier th sit through. Than Zack Snyder's Justice League. And people go. Oh it's boring. And uh, I didn't think it was that boring. When I see lines like. You know we survive our stars. And if we could survive them. Even the physical. Not just the physical stars. We could trans. You know they could transform us. And it's a story of a guy. Without hammering it home, you can figure it out on yourself to be, you have to be a better person. That's why Batman is not the Punisher. Batman is a better, he wants to be a better person. So by the end, he's saving people and people know they can count on Batman to be that's a good stepping point for whatever the future may be. And I liked that inner hidden core of the film. And I think Robert Panson did a great job with it. Like I said, I his voice worked well. It didn't sound goofy. It didn't sound silly. It didn't sound stupid. Uh, the Riddler. I actually didn't mind The Riddler. I will say this. I like him better than Jim Terry's Riddler because Jim Terry's Riddler is very goofy. Is very silly, and I don't. And true for this, I don't hate Jim Carrey as the Riddler. It's just I don't think it's great in rewatching because it's it's like if Ace Ventura, like if Jim Carrey played it a little bit more like some of his darker roles, I think it would have been better. But it's just, that was the top Jim Carrey. He just did Ace Ventura. He just did Dumb and Dumber. So that's the Jim Carrey they wanted. And very muddy in the camera. You know, with the baseball. You know, if that's the kind of Riddler you want, I actually prefer this kind of Riddler. Almost like a Jigsaw type. I didn't mind the voice. The guy was batshit crazy. No pun intended. Again, the, the beginning felt like something that was David, David Fincher's Zodiac. Like I said, I, I liked seeing a Batman film that felt akin to more of a horror movie. I, I, like I said, I liked that it was more detective style. And like I said, that was refreshing. It's not just a call. It's a warning to them. I mean, this is like back in the day, you know, some people have said this, yeah, those film noir movies, like Humphrey Bogart, or people in trench coat looking, even like, you know, brick with, I hate bringing that film up, because it's directed by Ryan Johnson, but that's actually a pretty decent detective story, with Joseph Gordon, Joseph Gordon Levitt, where he's a teen in high school, looking into the missing person, but there's a murder, And that's a film that has no action in it. And again, this has a good a Batmobile chasing with Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell, when he appears, he disappears. He's a chameleon as the Penguin. I forget I'm watching Colin Farrell. The makeup, the voice. This is easily one of Colin Farrell's best roles. And if they do decide to do more with him in the future, that will be very interesting. And like I said, when the f when he does fight, I mean, you just say, with the little fight standard throughout, he fights more than even in the Michael Keaton Batman. 
It's just with the longer running time, people feel it's less, but it's actually, I think, a bit more. I just find the pun, so this is it. nice choreography. <coughs> it's not shaky cam. <coughs> Sorry about that. It's not you know, the Christopher Nolan style. Like I said, this is, if you want to do that with Batman, this is doing it much better and doing it much in the right way. I like the dim, moody, atmospheric lighting and <clears throat> just a lot of great shots of Batman. Like really good cinematography. And I, I, lo and behold, a Batman movie where I think Batman is the most, is the best character. Do you think of The Dark Knight? Heath Ledger's the best character. Joker. To me, not Batman. This is the opposite. Oh, Gotham, maybe it's beyond saving. But I have to try. <clears throat> but I fully get his obsession. You, Andy Serkis, he did a good job as Alfred. I Yeah, he was used small, sparingly. But again, I appreciate that because... Like I say, it was refreshing to see more Batman than Bruce Wayne. It was refreshing to see... Most of the time, he has to do it on his own. Uh, like I say, it was different not only just from other superhero movies, but other Batman films. That's the thing. If you don't do a Batman film, or you don't do another one of these movies, do something a bit different, or do something a bit more refreshing. And this did that. Jeffrey Wright, uh, at least I thought he was great as Gordon. I really enjoyed him. I'm sorry, just because he's black, I'm not going to say he's woke. What, is Daredevil a bit after woke because Michael Clark Duncan played the team then? Or the, is the Avengers woke, 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 because Nick Fury is played by Sam Jackson, when Nick Fury was white? Yes, there are a lot of times they do that arbitrarily, but I can't go and seek that out in every fucking film, otherwise every fucking film you see it in. I th do think at times we have to, you know, it does happen. It will happen. And even if a film does do that, hopefully it doesn't ruin the film. And like I said, Catwoman says a stupid line by white privileged men, but at the same time, you look to the source, she's hypocrite. Uh, she doesn't stay to help Gotham at the end. She leaves. Oh, and the big hero of the movie is a white guy. So I just... That whole bat is like, uh, I don't, there are films that deserve that backlash. Like Ben Shapiro, I, I watched a bit of his review and I turned it off. If you don't like the film, you don't like the film. Teach their own. But Ben, but the reason Ben Shapiro doesn't like it, he's full of shit. So, but I, great, I've always thought Ben Shapiro was a lot of full of shit. But this Batman actor feel the burden of the weight of the world on his shoulders. And I thought there was some really good lines of dialogue and some really even grim humor. But uh, to get more into spoilers, starting now, spoilers. Super spoilers. You know, I liked that they found the thumb drive, because the, the victim was missing a thumb, and then his USB is connected to the thumb. You know, and it was a thumb drive. <laughs> I thought that was a bit of a grim take on humor. Um, there's a bit where Batman is going to check out the, the penguin, who's not fully up in the ranks. And, you know, some of the punch are going, hey, that that little suit's going to be full of blood. And then Batman looks at him and goes, Mine or yours? I thought that was a really badass line. Uh, you know, he fights the Penguin's goons, and like I said, Colin Farrell disappears in his role as Batman. I mean, as a Penguin. Now, Catwoman, there's a part of me that wonders if you needed Catwoman in the film. I would say, of the characters, she was the least interesting to me. Uh, I don't think any Catwoman for me will ever beat Michelle Pfeiffer. 
I don't think the actress did a bad job, Kravitz. I don't care what she says in the real world. In the movie, I think she does fine. I don't think she was bad. I liked her a lot better than Anne Hathaway. I'll say that. She's much better than Anne Hathaway in Dark Knight Pisses. Like, you want to see a boring movie? Go watch The Dark Knight Pisses. That's a boring fucking film with Christopher Nolan. That has shitty fight scenes. With with Batman vs. Bane. Wannabe Sean Connery as Darth Vader. Hey, old Batman. Welcome to die. Batman, so, Batman or someone making a fucking symbol on fire in front of a fucking building while entire city's in trouble. Like, who the fuck made that? Did Batman make it? Was he bored? Who the fuck made that? Uh, Batman, don't you think instead of taking the time to rig all these explosions on a fucking building wall to make a fucking bat signal, you could use that time to rescue some motherfuckers? Or I guess he's just a big fan of the crow. It's a fucking stupid movie. You want to see a stupid movie? The Dark Knight Rises is a stupid fucking film. I'm sorry, just because it's Christopher Nolan doesn't mean it's a 5 out of 5 star movie every time. My favorite director is John Carpenter. But even he did shit like... The Ward or... Fucking Memoirs of an Invisible Man. But I also kind of get why they have Catwoman in there because <clears throat> it's a contrast where Catwoman, she is more selfish. Like Batman has her undercover and he wants to hear about the DA, the bigger picture, but she cares about what happened to her friend. Which that's an understandable type of selfishness. But even later, that Catwoman helps Batman out a bit. But then she gets overpowered, and I, it's a it's a cool scene where Batman has to take some adrenaline and shoot into his leg, and then just boom, just beats every flipping fuck out of the guy. And Gore's like, "Stop, stop, stop!" And he's like, "He has to be stopped from killing the guy." But Batman is the guy who's saving people at the end, not Catwoman. It's the white privilege guy who is out there saving people. Catwoman is not doing anything. She's staying there with, you know, thumb up her ass. She doesn't stay to help Gotham. So to me, I thought the movie was saying that she was a hypocrite. And, you know, despite her protests, it's all, you know, it's more taught than action. And then the villain, the Riddler, is the other type of rad radicalization. I need to cleanse the city. This is a better plot than the fucking Batman Begins. Ra's al Ghul. They're both Gotham, wanting to cleanse Gotham, Liam Neeson, but I think it was done a lot fucking better in this movie. And there's pieces of direction I light, like during this funeral, where you just hear these screams, and you just you hear the screams first. And then this vehicle comes in, and this guy has a bomb. It is like the thing out of Jigsaw. I like the bit that, you know, after that, with this big fucking bomb, he just knocked out, and then the cops are trying to unmask him, and he's fucking pissed off. I did. There's lines of dialogue I like to Batman. They try to fuck with him, and he pushes him again. They said, This way, you're assaulted, officer. Actually, I assaulted three. I like the bit where he escapes, the camera work, when he di he gets the thing and he's rising up while the cops are trying to shoot him, or he gets on top and he flies down. <sighs> One nitpick is when he lands, it's a bit, it's too CGI, but that reminded me of John Wick 3, remember John Wick 3, I love John Wick 3, but that stupid shot of John Wick <laughs> and CG, Grant, at least here there's armor. So you can buy that he survived. So it this works better than that scene in John with three. But I'm just saying you can tell it's a bit CGI work. But yeah, it's it's better than what was in John with three. And I love John with three. So that's what I mean. Even if I like the film, there are nitpicks I have with it, but I just I loved its film nor detective mood. 
And it's a long film, but you're learning more about the city and the city secrets and how the city's more corrupt than one thought. And the Riddler is thinking he's a good guy and thinking like he wants to be like Batman. But the Batman flat out tells him, you're a psychopath. And so when the Riddler's caught, he's like, no, no, this isn't how it's supposed to work out. You're supposed to be working with me. And yeah, the Riddler does get caught. I mean, he he let... Batman is solving these riddles. At least to a bad guy. Played by John Turturro, who does a good job as Falcone. Getting shot. Which is like, cool, he's a bad guy, he's an asshole. Glad that he got shot. Fine. But then the Riddler does give him up. Like Kevin Spacey did in Seven. So there's definitely a comparison to that. But I was enjoying the journey. I was enjoying the story. But the bigger story is, I guess, Batman's arc. Where he does figure out there's bombs. So he figures out where he needs to go. And he you know, saves the mayor. And he saves other cops and people from assassins. And it's another good you know, fight scene where he's beating the shit out of them. Taking the gun, smack him in the face. You know, kicking them. Avoiding, so one shoots the other. And then when the the people are in trouble, ready to be electrocuted, that's where it's, be vigilante isn't enough. It's saving people what matters. That's the, if you're not saving people, what's the point? And I, that's why I like that scene so much. Because you know, it's about fighting the criminals and being the shadow of them, which is cool. But this is what it's about. It's about saving people. And people go, that's that's more Superman. No, that's Batman as well. Why do you think in the comics Batman doesn't want to kill? And Batman's about saving people. What the hell are people talking about? It's He's not the Punisher. Maybe that's what Zack Snyder thinks. That's why I think his movies suck. But that's not Batman. And I'm fine if Batman kills. Michael Keaton's Batman kills. I'm fine with that. But even Michael Keaton's Batman, it was still about stopping Jack Nicholson from killing the people from the, the toxins, the chemicals, I should say. Getting the balloons out. He stole my balloons. Batman 89 will always be my favorite live-action Batman film. This is honestly my second favorite. Batman Returns is a close third. I like Batman Returns. Granted... The penguins with the fucking missiles are still goofy as shit. <laughs> but I still like Bam Batman Returns. But this one, again, I just... You know, I, I liked... You know, Batman finding out more about his family, more, more about his father. He has a really nice scene with Alfred. Where Alfred gets put in the hospital. And... You know, Bruce Wayne is sitting next to him, and he's like, you know what, I was trying to fight that I was never steered, I would never would be steered, but you know, I did get close to being steered. In other words, he doesn't want to lose Alfred. And the nice little gesture of them holding hands while in the hospital. Like I said, when an action scene happens, I think it's well done. Like the hallway scene. There's a hallway scene where you just see muzzle, fire, and flash. And Batman being the shadow people. That's a better fucking version of what they try to do in the Robocop remake. Just the camera's not moving around. It's static. Uh, granted, the best I've seen that done is Equilibrium with Christian Bale. That's the thing with Christian Bale. If I want to see him, it's not as Batman. I see him in Equilibrium. Which to me is a much better movie and much better action film. But. You know, the, the end of the film it's. That realization is about hope not vengeance. Or vengeance to be a part of it but hope. Is what matters more. Fuck either the Gotham City song and Batman and Robin. City of. <laughs> City of hope, city of peace for every one of us. We all need it. Can't live without it. 
I know it's R. Kelly, and he pissed on everybody. Fuck R. Kelly, but it's a good song. Uh, yeah, I'm not fuck R. Kelly, but it's a good song. Why you say fuck R. Kelly? Just look up online for about five minutes. You'll find out why, but... So again, I... You know, someone said it's like if you took a Netflix, like, limited series, you put them all together. To me, that's good. To me, that's like a lot of these fucking Netflix shows. Where I'm like, they're too long. You know, I just rather see it a, a chunk one go than pad it out. And even then, yes. Catwoman says a stupid line. Could have just edited that out and it would have been better. It's a stupid fucking line. But it didn't ruin the whole movie because of one fucking line. If one line ruins the whole movie for you, I don't know what to tell you. Yes, the the pacing, about 10-50 minutes could have been trimmed here and there, you know, throughout it. But overall, I just really liked the atmosphere, I liked the mood, I liked the lighting, I think it's a good looking movie, I like the ideals it had. I think Robert Pattinson did a wonderful job. His voice, his his looks, silent acting. Give Trevor credit to Robert Pattinson. Did a good job. He's not buff. Michael Keaton wasn't buff. And Batman. It was the suit. But when the fight scenes happened, still worked. And again, it was nice, like, if I want to see more of a fun movie, I'll watch Michael Keaton's Batman. And if I want to see more of a mood detective, you know, detective comics, I will watch this one. I will gladly pick this up on Blu-ray when it comes out. Uh, yeah, I think this is the best live-action Batman since Batman Returns. Now, if we're including animated... Batman 89, The Dark Knight Returns of Peter Weller is my second favorite, and then I would say this one, and then Batman Returns. And then number five would probably be maybe Batman, maybe Under the Red Hood. But yeah, I just really enjoy it. Yeah, I actually like a film. And it's not because, oh, you're going to be afraid you get hated. I didn't like Spider-Man No Way Home. And this kiss is shit, because you know what? Batman doesn't invite five fucking villains into his fucking home because Alfred said, hey, it'd be okay to do that. And then the five villains go crazy and Alfred gets killed because Batman's a fucking idiot. Nope, that didn't happen. Happened with Spider-Man, because he's a fucking dumbass. He's, he's a fucktard. But anyway, uh, like I said, I really liked this film quite a bit. And uh, I will gladly... When it comes out on Blu-ray, we'll gladly watch it again. Sit back with a nice can of Mellow Yellow. And like Blade Runner 2049, enjoy the experience of what Matt Reeves, the director, tried in creating this world of Gotham. And again, there's a part of me that wishes it was connected with Joker. It can't because the, the timeline doesn't work and... They they have a little nod to Joker or a Joker character, but for what I understand in the sequel they're not going to do Joker, which is good. There's talks of Mister Freeze, which would be interesting on how the hell you do Mister Freeze in this kind of movie. I would be really curious about that. And there's other ideas that're floating about, but if well Matt Reeves will never see this. Do Mr. Freeze. I would be really curious how the fuck do you do that in this kind of movie? Because would it be like maybe someone who has a type of chemical that... Here's an idea. Maybe someone, they drink something. And like, or Mr. Freeze will like... And then they freeze from the inside out. I don't know, maybe that'd be too sci-fi for it, but... I think I like that movie Livewire, 
with Pierce Brosnan where people drink and the chem it's a it tastes like water but it's like a chemical that mixes with your stomach juices and you explode. Become a human bomb. Always like live wire. That'd be cool, like Mr. Freeze mixed in with live wire. Does that just create a horror film type of uh, mood as well? But uh, I'd be very curious to see what the future entails with this. And yeah, the Batmobile. I like the Batmobile. I like the logo. I love the setup where Colin Farrell doesn't know where Batman is. And then the bad guys are hearing, vroom, 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 vroom. and then Colin Farrell's looking, and the Batmobile is starting. That beats the fuck out of the Tumblr. And just beautiful shots, like when Colin Farrell gets his car flipped, and he looks, and there's Batman walking towards him, slow motion. A lot of these, like, just cool shots. You know, Batman the symbol. And. Oh, yeah, I, th I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.